The most distant object ever created by humans is NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft, a true marvel of engineering and perseverance. Launched in 1977, this spacecraft has traveled farther from Earth than any other human-made object in history. What makes its journey particularly astounding is not just the sheer distance it has covered, but the fact that it has now ventured into interstellar space, beyond the influence of our sun's magnetic field. Over 45 years after it began its mission, Voyager 1 is still functioning, still collecting data and still transmitting it back to Earth. This longevity was never part of the original plan. The mission was supposed to last just four years, aimed only at exploring the outer planets. Yet today, this decades-old spacecraft is still making discoveries in a realm of space once thought unreachable. What makes this mission even more extraordinary is the technology powering it. Voyager 1 is equipped with instruments and systems far less advanced than those found in modern consumer electronics. Its onboard computer has only 69 kilobytes of memory, tiny by today's standards, smaller than the smallest image file on your phone. It records information on magnetic tape, and it transmits signals back to Earth using a 23-watt radio transmitter, about the same power as a household light bulb. Yet with this humble hardware, it has managed to remain operational in one of the harshest environments imaginable. Through this outdated but resilient technology, Voyager continues to communicate across billions of kilometers, providing insights into a region of space never before explored. Its recent findings have sparked global attention. Even after all, these years Voyager 1 has managed to collect data that is exciting scientists and reshaping theories about the outer reaches of our solar system and beyond. It has helped confirm that interstellar space is not empty, but filled with particles, plasma waves, and magnetic forces. These discoveries are not just academic. They help us understand how our solar system interacts with the rest of the galaxy, and by extension, how life might arise and survive elsewhere. The story of Voyager begins with a rare opportunity, an extraordinary alignment of the outer planets that occurs only once every 176 years. Gary Flandro, an engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, recognized this opportunity in the 1960s. Using simple tools, a pencil, paper, and basic engineering models, he calculated that this unique planetary configuration would allow a spacecraft to use the gravity of one planet to slingshot to the next. This method, known as gravity assist or gravitational slingshot, would greatly increase the speed of the spacecraft without the need for additional fuel. Normally, a trip from Earth to Neptune would take around 30 years. With gravity assists, that journey could be completed in just 12 years. NASA acted quickly to seize this once-in-a-lifetime chance. In the summer of 1977, they launched two nearly identical spacecraft, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, just 15 days apart. Although launched second, Voyager 1 was placed on a faster trajectory and overtook Voyager 2. These twin spacecraft were designed not just to explore the outer planets but to take advantage of this rare celestial alignment and extend humanity's reach further into the cosmos than ever before. In their early missions, the Voyager probes provided stunning and unexpected images of the outer planets and their moons. They gave us our first close-up views of Jupiter and Saturn, revealing details that astonished scientists. For example, Voyager discovered active volcanoes on Jupiter's moon Io, making it the most volcanically active body in the solar system. It also showed us Saturn's intricate ring system and sent back data suggesting the possibility of subsurface oceans on moons like Europa and Enceladus, environments that could potentially harbor life. Voyager 2 became the first, and so far, only, spacecraft to visit Uranus and Neptune. In 1986, it flew by Uranus and revealed its tilted magnetic field in strange, icy moons. Three years later, it passed Neptune, capturing images of its powerful storms and discovering previously unknown rings and moons. These encounters expanded our understanding of the solar system's outer giants and provided the only close-up observations of these distant planets. The spacecraft's journeys were not without risk. To reach their targets, the Voyagers had to travel through the asteroid belt, a region between Mars and Jupiter filled with rocky debris. Although Pioneer 10 and 11 had made it through safely, 
it was still an uncertain passage. Moreover, the enormous distances involved meant that the spacecraft had to operate independently. With a signal delay of several hours, there could be no real-time control from Earth. Their onboard computers had to process information, navigate, and make decisions on their own, a significant challenge given their limited processing power. Two, maintain communication. Each Voyager was equipped with a large 12-foot-wide dish antenna that transmits and receives signals using radio waves. These signals travel at the speed of light, but even so, it takes over 18 hours for a message from Voyager 2 to reach Earth. As the spacecraft travel farther away, the signals grow weaker, and Earth's radio telescopes must work harder to detect them. Background noise from Earth-based electronics like cell phones, radios, and televisions makes this task even more difficult. Yet NASA's Deep Space Network has managed to keep the link alive. Eventually, both spacecraft reached the edge of the heliosphere. The vast bubble of charged particles and magnetic fields created by the sun. Beyond this bubble lies interstellar space, filled with particles ejected by dying stars, radiation from ancient supernovae, and magnetic fields shaped by the galaxy. Scientists anticipated that crossing the heliopause, the outer boundary of the heliosphere, would result in noticeable changes in the environment. They expected to see a sharp increase in the number of cosmic rays and a shift in the orientation of the magnetic field. However, the actual crossing of this boundary proved more puzzling than expected. While Voyager 1 did detect a dramatic increase in plasma density on August 25, 2012, indicating that it had entered interstellar space, it did not observe a significant change in the magnetic field's direction. This was a surprise, suggesting that the boundary between solar influence and interstellar space is more complex and less clearly defined than previously thought. Today, the Voyager spacecraft are still drifting outward, slowly heading toward the distant Oort cloud, a hypothetical region filled with icy bodies that could stretch nearly halfway to the next star system. Though it will take thousands of years for them to reach even the outer edges of this region, they continue to send back valuable data about the interstellar medium, the sparse mixture of gas, dust, and radiation that exists between star systems. These Spacecraft have not only survived but thrived in deep space. Their resilience is a testament to the ingenuity of the engineers who built them and the scientists who continue to interpret their data. The Voyager mission has profoundly changed our understanding of space, showing that the solar system extends far beyond the planets into a vast and still largely unknown frontier. With every passing day, the Voyagers travel farther, carrying with them the golden records phonograph records encoded with sounds and images from Earth, intended to communicate the story of our world to any intelligent life that might encounter them. While the odds of the records ever being found are astronomically low, the gesture itself reflects the human desire to reach out, to explore, and to connect with the universe beyond our own. The legacy of the Voyager mission is not just in the discoveries it has made, but in what it represents. The unyielding spirit of exploration, the pursuit of knowledge, and the possibility that even the simplest technology, guided by vision and determination, can carry humanity to the stars.